any questions before we begin. Make sure everybody can see the screen. Can everyone see it? Just type yes into your chat box. All right, good. What about now? Can you still see it? Everyone else can see it, Ra. All right. You might have to refresh or reload your screen. All right. Let's begin. This is where we left off at last class was on the Black's Law Dictionary, and we was talking about amorality and how even within the Black's Law Dictionary, in particular, the fourth edition deluxe, it states that a court that has a very extensive jurisdiction of maritime causes, civil and criminal controversies arising from out of acts done upon or relating to the sea, or otherwise, or questions, excuse me, of prizes. We are um, re um, freshen your screen. It is properly the successor of the consular courts which were emphatically the courts of merchants and seagoing persons, establishing the principal maritime cities on the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. And we talked about this. Uh, what was the Western Empire? Because allegedly we're in the Western Empire now. Allegedly that's where we're at. All right? And everyone been chanting down Babylon. You know, whether it's the rosters, the nation and gods and earth, or... Uh, or the RBGs, or the Nation of Islam. We're supposed to be in the Western Empire. So what they're talking about, commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. What was this empire? You know, what was this empire that they're talking about here? And then it says, to supply the wants of tribunes that might decide whether arising from out of maritime commerce, also the system of jurisprudence, relating to and growing out of jurisdiction and practice of the amorality courts. Now, it goes to consular courts. Definition. It says courts held by the consul of one country within the territory of another. All right, so who's in the territory of another? Because it's the United States of America. America is not of the United States. So is courts held by the consul of one country within the territory of another under the jurisdiction or authority given by treaty? What treaty in particular produced this? It was what we recall to or what we refer to as the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco. Hence the United States of our Morocco or the United States of America. Right. In some instance or instances, they have also a, a criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect, were subject to review by the courts of the home government, the last of the United States consular courts, Morocco. It was the last of the United States consular courts. All right which was abolished in 1956. As we just said, the United States is of America. Okay. Prophet Nubudra Ali revived or retrieved the Moorish flag in the year 1913 and called the Moors to attention. 
it is the job of the conscious Moors to fly the Moorish flag again, as this is our land, our Morak, America, of lift the Moorish nation. Now we know that this flag, the cherry tree, was talking about um, prior to this, or in conclusion, or in cohoots, I should say, uh, with the cedar tree and the cherry background, and this five-pointed star, green star, black border, cherry background, is basically symbolized George Washington, who actually was the ninth president of the United States of America, as we went over the eight prior presidents or eight previous presidents before him. And then also, um, in my book, The First World Order, I go into the other eight presidents before them. So really, he's the 16th, um, actually, excuse me, the 17th um, president, and he's the first president under the Constitution for the United States of America. But what it says is that it tells the story that he was nine years old, hence allegedly the ninth president. And, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the cherry tree. Chopped down the full verbial cherry tree that was in 1774. And that was the national flag of the defeated Moors on which that he chopped down. That was what was symbolic to what we just read. And we know that flag was retrieved again, just like it says in 1913, and then by 1956, because the Moors couldn't come together, and they kept going under false titles and corporations in the state, and um, you know those types of things, eventually becoming a 501c3. You know that's the ink. In particular, the Moorish Holy Temp the Moorish Science Temple of America, Inc. Um, those of which that mostly fall up under Charles Kirkman Bay, which is now ran by um, I think his name is Jones um, Lovell. Well, it was by Lovell in the um, 80s, in mid in, um, from the 70s. Well, yeah, 80s and 90s. Um, but now it's Jones, Jones Bay, all right, the National Grand Sheik Jones Bay, all right, so we know that others have come forth in which that now you have um, Bailey L., who's the Supreme Grand Sheik of the Moorish Science Temple of America, and he comes from up under the banner of Emilio. All right? Then you have Braswell Bay, um, who was supposedly removed um, by Bailey L., and he's supposed to be the Supreme Grand Sheik. And then you have Saidi Rael of the Moorish Science Temple of America, 1928. And he is the alleged Supreme Grand Sheik. And then you have, yeah, it gets kind of ridiculous after a while here. Um, but put it this way, everybody is jockeying for the Supreme Grand Sheik position because Prophet Noble Drali left one person involved or one person at the helm, and that was Supreme Grand Sheik Edward Milieu. 
Now, you had John Givenel to come and sit in the seat of the prophet and say he was the reincarnation of the prophet, in which that took some members away. Then you had Kirkman Bay, who roughed up people, him and his thug group at the time. Um, but, I mean, even he himself wasn't too much of a thug because he ended up getting kidnapped himself, you know, and roughed up, you know, by another portion, in which that was with the prophet, but even after the prophet past form, they was jacking for position, and the whole damn thing became a mess. If those who want to read it, you can go to my uh, website and go to um, the Moorish Holy um, Temple of Science of the World. You can go there and read the whole thing, the whole, some, mostly the, it's probably the best information that you can read about the prophet that's concise that has documentation pictures um, photos uh, you know references to various books you know so I recommend everybody go there because um, there's a lot of people that's in denial about what's really going on and what has happened with the temple and with them being infiltrated um, the FBI had reports um, dated back then after the prophet passed, you know, on up to uh, to now about the infiltration. You know, for those that want to see, the, I mean, you can actually pull it up online. Just put in Morris Holy, the Morris Science Temple of America, just put that in and then put in FBI. And you can see who's the agents simply by reading their information. But I give everybody name of who was, who was involved, and I give you their pictures, who they were, and everything on the website. But since that was a mess, and really Prophet was dealing with an ecclesiastical law, which means that it was dealing with um, the divine. So hence the reason why it's called the Moorish Divine National Movement. It used to be the Moorish National Divine Movement of the world. All right? It was also referred to as the Moabite Holy Temple of Science of the world. All right? So it's had many names. And have gone through transition from 1913, um, the old Canaanite temple, or the Canaanite temple, the 1916, 1925, 1926, 1928. Um, the name changed as the headquarters was moved from mostly from the New, New Jersey to what we now refer to as. Um, Mecca, which is Chicago, Illinois. All right. While the prophet was there in Chicago, Illinois, he put the Moorish Temple of Science, which is the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, which couldn't use holy at the time because um, they didn't utilize the religious segment because it was a civic organization. But under that civic organization, the adept chambers were added. The books called the 102s, going to the 101s, which is the Moorish um, questionnaire for children. The Moorish questionnaire for adults, which is the 102, is the Moorish questionnaire for children. 101 is the Moorish questionnaire for adults or for Moorish Americans. Then you had the Moorish Holy Quran Circle 7. All right, and then you had the Moorish literature, which um, are the words in which that was grasped from the various articles from out of the Moorish guideposts. 
in which that the prophet made his lectures, his speeches, and it was condensed to become the Moorish literature. All right. You had the divine constitution and bylaws, or the bylaws, Moorish bylaws and constitution. All right, mostly seven articles. And which that correlates to the circle seven, which correlates to the seven chakras or the seven Elohims or the seven angels, the seven eyes of Allah, as is mentioned within the 101s and the 102s. So these were the books, all right? So this is just a little history so that y'all can know about the Moorish Science Temple of America, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, which is the Moorish Divine and National Movement, all right? The civics and the religious were always supposed to be together. And it was up until 1934 until Charles Kirkman Bay took the gumption in order to form the Moorish Holy Temple or the Moorish, excuse me, the Moorish Science Temple of America slash Moorish Holy Temple of Science. And then with the, what he did is incorporating it, he removed the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. But until 1934, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, which was the civic side, was actually used. But Charles Kirkman Bay, they chose to remove the Moorish Holy Temple of Science and only keep the religious side. So hence, the Adept Chambers, allegedly for over 50 years, was not even functional. All right. And Brother Taj speaks about this quite a bit, about the infiltration in which that took place. And it's true. Now, who was Prophet Noble Drali? Well, his mother was Eliza Turner. His father was John Drew. John Drew Quitman. And he, blew, he grew up on a Cherokee reservation, born 1886, here in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, about 25 miles away from where I live at now, on the Chohari Reservation, which is near going towards Clinton, North Carolina. All right? Now, his mom, Eliza Turner, was the Louisiana branch family in which that was related to the Tunica and the Washita. Him and the Empress are cousins. Blood related. Okay, as a matter of fact, Prophet Nabut Ali was the was the fifth Marquis of the of Diaruj, which was basically what we refer to as the so-called Louisiana non-purchase, as well as also of the various countries throughout Europe. All right, when you go and do your research on what I'm talking about on the website, you will see how they are related. So, the vast estate physically was talking about us having access to over 30 million acres of land stretching from Louisiana on up through 13 states through nearly the whole of Canada. All right? That was our land. And it was never purchased. As a matter of fact, Thomas Jefferson gave his sentiments at the time, stating that the United States never finished paying Spain. And what they did pay for to Spain was nothing more than a couple of barracks, military barracks, and a couple of streets. One is called Bourbon Street, in which that is within New Orleans to this day, where they have the Mardi Gras on. And that was it. That's it. The rest of Louisiana, the rest of the 
of those 13 states stretching from out of Louisiana on up into um, Canada, or that is fiction. It was never purchased. That is our original land. That is where um, Andrew Jackson, remember, did the Trails of Tears, in which they allegedly moved the Cherokee from out of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, in which that there was over 10 to 100,000 so called blacks, in which that left during that Trails of Tears. Years later, we see it as Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, so we have to realize, you know, these connections, very important, as it helps us to understand what took place and what we have the right to claim. A lot of what I'm telling you are Masonic codes and secrets. But this is the preamble to the Constitution of the United States of America. Preamble. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to um, ourselves and our posterity, do ordain, establish the Constitution for the United States of America. So the United States is even different from the United States of America. The preamble of the Constitution of the United States or for the United States of America shows that the origin comes from a pre-existing nation. This is the secret of, the na of nature's law and nature's gods. Remember, that's what we just showed you in their own definition. Symbolized in the two seals of the Great Seal of the United States, the continent of the United States of the indigenous Moorish nation, nature's laws and nature's God is mentioned in the Declaration of Independence. All right. Union. A uniting or connecting of two or more in one. They can represent chemicals, uh, principles of peoples, an example of one form, one plus one is two. In the secret history of the West, the two seals of the United States represents the union between the Moorish Muslims and European Christians into a government based on the ancient and, and um, this, uh, illustrious principles of the five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, as established in the ancient civilization of Moor, the ancient Moabite law of peace. That's what we were talking about the last class. These principles are found upon nature's laws and nature's gods, mentioned in the um, unanimous um, Declaration of Independence. Nature's laws is sometimes referred to as the will in the sky, um, the great zodiac um, constellation, universal law of peace. So the civil United States of America is the Albion's Europeans, colony states, the great seal, all right, of the United States is the Moabite Moors, which is the pyramid, um, which is the federal, all right? And I'll explain more of this in a second. Here it is, conjunction, all right, peace and freedom between the United States and Morocco, now beyond Europeans, once again, Union States, United States government, or I don't even want to call them that because they they really not a government except only in the terms of the word, like we said, mind control, which the word gov come from governor, and the word meant short for mental, which means mind control. Um, Moors, Federal Reserve, North America, North America, Northwest Africa. Okay. You know that the number 13 shows up a lot on the back. Of course, 13 symbolizes a new beginning in numerology, geometria. The United States is not America, though. The United States 
America is not America. All right? As you see here, this is what they call the United States. So learn the difference. United States citizens, and then, as you see here, America, which is the whole America, which is North, Central, the adjoining islands, and South America. That is America, and we are the Americans. There's a difference. All right? The Treaty of Marrakesh, 1786, made between the Caliph of Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, who was also a Bey, Islamic leader of the Moorish Empire, or Maghreb, and the United States of America. This first page contains the seal and the introduction articles of the treaty made in June 1786 and later translated in 1787. The Arabic original and English translation protects all Muslims or Moors from enslavement. That's what it's supposed to have did. Most of the 56 to 57 percent, according to Sivayan Diof books, Servant of Allah, blacks captured in the slave trade were citizens of the Islamic nations, Moorish nations that recognized the caliph of the Moorish Empire. The enslavement of these Moors or Muslims were a violation of nat national and international law. And that is one part in which that roots is showing, or roots have shown, the old roots and the new roots. Right? They showed you um, Africans, you know, that it was let you brought here on the transatlantic slave trade was Muslims prior to them being born. You, you heard and seen them call it a don and praying to Allah and using... Allah's name and so forth and so on. Even though they made it act as if it was just something across the across the globe, this actually symbolizes what happened here. See, this is Captain Bainbridge, and he paid tribute to the day. See, there's paintings and portraits and drawings of this information. Right? You can get the book, Ancient and Modern in Britons, by David Matt Ricci, volume one and two. And he goes into how the French, the Britons, which is England, United States, Portugal, Spain, all these same countries that supposedly participated in the slave trade had to pay us tribute all the way up until 1914. As the Kushite Empire became the Ghana Empire, became the Malian Empire, became the Songhai Empire, and later become the Moroccan Empire, which was called also the Ottoman Empire. All the damn same empire. But they got us thinking because of the different times of history, they can call it a different name and throw us off. But it's the same people. We refer to them now as the Omex. Your descendants. All right? We refer to them now as the Washita, the Washita Empire, or the Empire Washita. You go to the Camp Holmes Treaty. All right? Treaty of Camp Holmes. Anybody looked that up yet when I made mention of it? I did that over the last two, three classes. Has anybody looked that up yet? If so, unmute your phone and tell me. Where everybody can hear it. If not, I can see more. Look it up. I'm not doing these classes for my health. These classes are because we have to disseminate this information so that y'all can get it and grasp it, so that y'all can be um, have some clear understanding of what you're doing in life, in their courtroom. In legal matters, etc. Et yes, greetings. Yes, greetings. Peace, family. Sharif L. Um, I just did a quick Google, and it says um, two days after two days after two days of negotiation, the, the Treaty of Camp Holmes was signed on August twenty fourth, eighteen thirty five. 
It consisted of 10 articles calling for the Com Comanche and the Ouachita to live in peace with the, with the United States right, and with right. the tribes that are relocated to the Indian Territory. Right. Right. And the rest, and the rest of the tribes were the Creek, which is Muskogee, the Choctaw, the Cherokee, the Seneca, the Osage, and all of these tribes together formed, well, all of these nations, um, tribal nations formed an empire in which they became known as the Empire of Washita. It was called the Washita Nations. And this is historical. And the treaty is called the Treaty of Homes. Is that? Yes, it's yes, it's yeah, um, Quick question. Um, prior to this occurring, were they known as the Five Civilized Tribes? Yes. 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 All right. Is that? Thank you. Yes, these are the same five civilized tribes that they refer to them in history as. They call them civilized because they was advanced as far as um, the Europeans are concerned here in the Western Hemisphere. They are the ones in which that this last Western Empire was built on. They were the descendants of the Omex. They, they are the pyramid and mound builders. Treaty of Camp Holmes, and Holmes is spelled H-O-L-M-E-S, H-O-L-M-E-S, Camp Holmes, C-A-M-P, Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S. Okay, this is August 1835. Look it up, and it tells you about the Wichita, Washita nations as they all came together. Because people want to know, well, you know, I never heard of the Washita Empire or the Empire of Washita. You know, where that come from? Well, that comes from history. That ain't um, one person at the helm as um, many Negroes are trying to make it seem and to be right now. Sorry, that doesn't exist. And then they have it under the damn 501c3. That's fraudulent. Negroes, you know what I'm saying, um... Who is really acting in fraud? You can't put a empire or a nation under no damn five hundred one c three. Otherwise, it's not an empire or a nation, is it? Because a five hundred one c three is Vatican control via its servants, which are the secretaries of the state, who are the servants of the United States Secretary, federally. And the United States is dictated policy by the Pope. If you don't believe me? When he comes here, all of them have to bow and kiss that damn pinky ring. Name me a president that ain't bow and kiss that damn pinky ring when he comes. This is what they're doing. All right, so the Constitution only speaks of a Republican form of government. We as United Washington do not follow a Republican form of government. We are a council. But for those that speak about the Republic, well, this is the general United States of America and the family of nations. In which that this is what Prophet Noble Jali was talking about was linking us back with the family of nations. Well, the family of nations, if you go to um, Title 36, United States Codes, um, Section 171, I mean 172, you go to Title 4, United States Codes, Chapter 2, Section 41. Tells you of the original of the older pledge. He tells you of the original seal, um, Title Four, United States Code, Chapter One and Section One, the original flag, Article Four, Section Four, Title Five, United States Code, 
section 1501, section um, 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 area 1. It says Republican form of government. That is within the Constitution also. General Constitution, three branches. Of course, we know there is the judicial, legislative, and executive. You have the Congress of the United States. You have the law of nations, family of nations, which is Article 1. Section 8, Clause 10. You have common law, which it was once under Article 3, Section 1, Dash 2. You have Senate of the um, United States, Article 1 and 3. Excuse me, I, I, I skipped natural born citizen. That's in the Republic, and they still not American. Okay, even if they was born here, they're not American. They're United States citizens. And that's for anyone who are not indigenous, because the word indigenous is talking about native. It's talking about aboriginal. It's talking about American. It's talking about natural person. All right, so... So because a person is born here, it doesn't make them um, natural. It doesn't make them a citizen. All right? President of the General National United States Government, Article 2 and 3. The Jura Form of Government, Article 1, Section, um, Article 1 through 7, Bill of Rights, a Declaration. July 4th, 1776, original 13 nations, interactment, which I won't even call them 13 nations. It actually was 13 colonies, as we know. And those 13 colonies was nothing more than um, towns. You have the enactments. You have the national dividend. You have to qualify voter. And to be qualified as a voter, you have to take classes so that you become part of the collegiate um, vote and not the electoral um, and not the um, popular vote. So the um, electoral collegiate vote is is where actually you have to go through a class for. All right, and that's what we as Moors actually supposed to um, be. Right? If you're talking about voting, it would have to be through a class, an actual class, so you sit down and go through this information in the classroom to know what the hell you're doing instead of just voting like the rest of the knuckleheads, you know, a popular vote. You know, and that's what they're doing. Oh, I like this one. Oh, I like her shoes. Oh, I like the way he said that. Some, some silly shit. What's the morals and the principles that they stand upon? What's the history? But here we have the administrative government of the United States in the United States in the United Nation. You have Title 36 United States Code Section 171 under God History Title IV, United States Code, Section 41, Great Seal, 1935 to 1986. You have Title IV, United States Code, Section 1, Historical Flag, 50 Stars. You have the federal government, 20, Title 28, United States Code, Section 302. Title V, United States Code, Section 1501, Area 2. You have federal administrative three departments in which that don't have checks and balances. Just like we said, the police can do all three. Judicial, edu um, executive, and legislative. When he giving you a ticket, when he stops you, when he give you a ticket, when he asks you for your drops license and registration and, and um, insurance, he just did all three. A damn policy enforcer just did all three branches of the government on your ass. All three. The United States Congress, 
is not the Congress of the United States. As a matter of fact, the United States Congress um, came into play after World, um, after um, the Revolutionary War. Excuse me, the civil, after the Civil War with Abraham Lincoln, after he got assassinated. Prior to him becoming assassinated, he put the country under martial law, and Congress has never voted to remove that process. In fact, that process continued to go further on, and by 1933, June 5th, as they moved the um, money from off the gold standard, it made the people the enemy of the state. The country was bankrupt by 1871. It was bankrupt. It was already facing problems. All right? It always has um, problems. All right? So you have the laws of nations, family of nations, Article 1 and um, 8 Clause 10, which is on number 7. On the original side, now you have the United Nations. Everything in which they did, as you see, was a mirror or a duplicate of the original in order to make you think that you was in the realness. This is the Dorothy um, wished away from, um, in, from a you know, into a tornado from out of Kansas into the land of Oz type of shit is what took place. So instead of common law, you got statutory law. But there's no dictionary, no encyclopedia on statutory law. I'm not saying that they don't have those laws, because they do. Because you can go to the General Assembly of each state and they have statutory laws. But as far as having an actual real book, that judges read just like they do the Bouvier's diction, Law Dictionary or the Black's Law Dictionary or Durkheim's Law Dictionary or Ballantine's Law Dictionary? No. Nah. Statutory law is maritime or amorality law, which is based on the 11th Amendment. Natural born citizen. Um, they made everyone 14th Amendment citizen, allegedly freeing us um, from slavery through the 13th Amendment and then 14th Amendment allegedly turning us into citizens. But yet, all truth be told, the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. Congress was never called back into order, and, and two-thirds of Congress had to agree to these particular amendments. That's why Prophet Nubudra Ali said um, that the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, in particular the 14th and 15th Amendment, wouldn't even been necessary if we would have known who we were. Senate of the United States, Article 1, Section 2. Now you have the United States Senate, not mentioned in the Constitution. You have the laws of the United States. Then you have the judicial system. You have the presidents of the general national United States government, Article 2 and Section 3. Now you have the president of the corporate national United States government, the 12th Amendment. You have the de jure government and you have the de facto government. You have the 11th through 27th Amendment, which is ex post facto. In other words, some some extra past shit that they got you caught up in. Because Article 1 through 7, some say 1 through 10, which is called the Bill of Rights, are the ones in which that we've been able to utilize as laws, 1 through 10 in particular. A declaration, um, July 4th, 1776, of the original 13 um, colonies, as it's called towns, as I refer to them as, then you have the Declaration of Independence, all right, a declaration, July 4th, 1776, is different than the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776, and allegedly 12 colonies. 
You have the enactments, and now you have the executive orders. All right, you have the executive orders. You have national or dissident, and you have alien. You have qualified voter, and you have registered voter. Many are happy being registered voters. Which the voters only give you the ability in order to vote within the um, within the popular vote. The popular. You know, I think that's a that's a shame that here we are, we have answers, and we have people who don't want to follow through, you know, that, you know, you have some more who say vote, then you have some who say don't vote. But even if you did vote as being an American or a national, or in this particular case, a non-U.S., national as you're not part of the US you're what we refer to as an American national for lack of a better term as far as politically let's just say that way all right so you need to know this also your birth certificate Title created by the state and your live birth record, which you have from us, is title created by life. There's a difference. Baby born endowed. Cargo birth delivered. Your mother autographed to establish that you are the holder of this state in due course. Informant autographs as indicated that you have no paternal holder, that you're not a, no paternal holder of this state. What's the estate? The estate is your birth certificate. It needs verification or predicated on your birth certificate. Mother gave maiden name, which indicates a bastard later still birth on the register. Register signs your estate into probate, and you become a ward to the state. Given a lawful name, lawful name is privately recorded, traditionally within family name, Bible, Quran, etc., etc., Name is corporatized. Name is, is publicly registered, combining your given and family names. Title, your given name, corporation, trade name, rightful beneficiary of trade name, unwitting trustee of trade name. Format in handwritten, in proper grammatic English. Latter use is showing you or your title as unique. John. Full colon of uh, family name. So John full colon, or as we would say, Ali full colon Bay, or of the family Bay. Now you have to format in either handwritten or typed, not necessarily all caps, which is often later used to indicate the legal name. Um, most times, the name in all caps is, of course, is what we know is on. Birth certificate, driver's license, social security card, tombstone, etc., etc. Capitis um, diminuto um, minima, the lower or least comprehensive degree of loss of status, rights of liberty, and citizenship unaltered. Last law, second edition. Right? Then you have the maxima, which is the highest or most comprehensive loss of status. Change from ones of freedom to one of bondage. And of course, like we said, the birth certificate is a bond. 
It has a bond number on it, which is the numbers in all red. And when you come of age, when you mature at 18, hence you put the word bond and age together, and you have the word bondage, as you see here. All right? Then you have sovereign, um, sovereign public trust. At age 18, you become the executor of the estate as a free man, woman, in your sovereign trust. As the whole in due course, in a permanent trust, you can now, at any time, claim legal title to your estate property. Well, you have the foreign such as trust. A trust that is formed by splitting your estate, creating a legal title, holder for the state, and an equity title, user for you, and it is a temporary, not permanent trust, right? You only have possession, use not legal title of property. Now, you're a beneficiary of sovereign public trust. State is your public state trustee or servant trustee with a fiduciary duty to protect and serve you, the rightful beneficiary of the public trust. State is beneficiary of the foreign statutes trust. State is holder in the let's go back, excuse me. Um, is holder of your estate or property used as a as a surety for the IMF or International Monetary Fund debt obligation, which is through the Federal Reserve Bank, and is the beneficiary of the Settish Trust. What is the Settish Trust? The Settish Trust is your birth certificate. That bond number ties to a trust in which that the state is claiming to be beneficiary of. They have a benefit in that. And their benefit is that they're selling that bond, the original one at least, which is called your live birth record, the one with your footprints on it at a 45 degree angle, they're selling that on the open stock market for hundreds of millions of dollars. You don't believe me? Look it up. Go to Fidelity.com, Fidelity.com, and go to Simple Lookup or Research, and then put in either your birth certificate number, your bond number, your Social Security number on the front, with or without the dashes, or the IMF number, which is called your prepaid levy bond number, on the back of the Social Security card. Either one of those four will pull up who owns you and how much you're being traded for in the stock market today. Born as holder of estate, creditor. Now birth as user of estate, debtor. This record is used as evidence for a birth um, certificate that certifies a bond issue. This certificate is certified as a bond with the World Bank acceptance of the trust. Include your birth weight analysis used to calculate your value in table relating to gold. Remember we talked about the fact that the IRC, which is the Internal Revenue Code, speaks of that you are worth $650,000 at birth. And they estimate that if you were born about five pounds, you was worth your weight in gold, all right? And, of course, we know this baby that's born larger than five pounds. There's some that's born smaller than five pounds. But, nevertheless, they average out to around five pounds or so. And they're saying that you're worth your weight in gold. So let's say right now gold is, of course, we know gold is more than $1,000, but let's say it's $1,000. And that child weighs 16 ounces, and one ounce of gold is $1,000. So that's $1,600, um, excuse me, $16,000. Then the bank gets their hand on the bond of $16,000, and they do fractionalized banking. Uh, fractionalized financing in which that the Federal Reserve give their money, play money, 
to the banks that they can utilize and which that marks it up ten times the value. So now that sixteen thousand dollars now become one point six million. Okay, so the IRC, which is Internal Revenue Code, speaks that you are at least worth six hundred and fifty thousand dollars at birth. All right, so you knock a little bit off of that, and you can see where the value in gold comes from. Hence, the reason why Dorothy was on the yellow brick road, which was gold. Because we're stating that she was worth a certain amount. That's why she was going to the Emerald City, symbolized the Federal Reserve Bank, where they make the greenbacks. It's the color emerald, green. When she went through the poppy field, that's morphine slash heroin. She fell asleep. 90% of the drug trade of, of um, heroin, which is smack, is ran through China and Afghanistan. That's why they went in in order to have war with Afghanistan, was to get those farmers back to growing their crops. They're poppy seeds or poppy plants. Because that's how the United States make their money. You don't believe me? Read. As a matter of fact, hell, Rick Ross tell you um, that the CIA used to sell him drugs. So you ain't got to go far. And who the CIA works for? The government. And they're not even supposed to be having operations in this in, in this state. That's the FBI um, business allegedly. But it doesn't matter. All of them is corporations. They all got a damn EIN number. You can look up. Anyway, inhabitant, born on the land with inherited judicial jurisdiction and under common law of land. This is why we put you under everything common law. Common law name correction, um, non-taxpayer status, which is common law, et cetera, et cetera. Here you have foreigner, aliens under commercial jurisdiction, and later also admiralty maritime law of the sea. Remember, that became the said law after collapse of the last Western Empire or the fall of the last Western Empire who dealt with consular courts, which was the original courts by merchants and those who traveled on the seas. So this is once again some mirror shit that they did in order to make us think that they were still operating the exact same way and they're not. This document establishes your estate, which can be then stolen, but it is also your affidavit of life and birth of claim. Well, this document converts your estate into a tradable property and puts you to work for the foreign such as trust via the name, which is the birth certificate. Inherited right to title, you are a holder of your sovereign estate. Title claimed by state, false presumption, Claims and contracts or prima facie evidence, which means it's true until you rebut it. So you never say that that's not what happened, then they can assume that it did and therefore put your ass in jail with or without a witness. Even though based on Sherbo versus Cullens, there's no crime if there's no corpus delecti. There must be a corpus delecti. There must be an injured party for a crime to exist. All right? For a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. 
or damaged property and a sworn affidavit attached stating that you damaged it, someone was an eyewitness to it, and it can't be the police after the, after the fact because he never eyewitnessed it. And it can't be the DA getting up speaking on behalf of the state when the damn state was not the eyewitness. The people were not an eyewitness. There was no eyewitnesses. For a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. You have to remember that. This is why Obama letting out those who allegedly committed victimless crimes. There was no injured party, which is mostly drug offense. Drug offense. He was caught trafficking or having drugs on him, you know, and there was no witnesses stating that they sold it to them, et cetera, et cetera. That was some Bill Clinton shit that he did in 1994 when he signed the three strikes law and you out. In which that set up the prison industrial complex that we see today. Get the book by Alexander, um, Alexander Michelle Alexander, um, her book called The New Jim Crow. The big business is the prison industri um, industry, industrial um, complex or industry. Hell, Michael Jordan damn near, become, damn, damn near became a damn billionaire off of it. He put in $200 million in prison bonds and made $600 million off this shit. And plus, niggas are still buying insurance. That's a serious ass come up. As he is serious ass gambler. Still, even after his father got murdered. Allegedly. I actually lived down here and we went to a store in Lillian and the clerk told us that they seen Michael Jordan on father um, days after his alleged death. It is said here in North Carolina that his daddy um, had to fake his death because um, they was trying to um, mob or, you know, there was several um, people who was after him and Jordan for debts for gambling type of thing. This is what been said here in North Carolina. All right, I can somewhat believe that. All right. So facts for thoughts. United States has no inherited sovereignty. Only what is in the Constitution. Enforce it now and forevermore, Moors. And what that means, the United States had no inherited power of sovereignty and, and only these enumerated in the Constitution. The manifest purpose of the Tenth Amendment was to put beyond dispute the proposition that all power not so granted were reserved to the people. And any further power can only be obtained by a new grant. All right? And that's John Bouvier's concise encyclopedia of law. All right, Francis on Royal, on third revised or revision page, 639, definition of constitution. All this Kansas versus Colorado. All right, and basically what that is talking about is that Article 6 states that this constitution, its laws, and the treaties are the supreme law of the land. Obama just got in trouble through the right wing here recently because he stated that treaties trump the Constitution. And the treaty he's talking about is international treaty. Right? As he signed on to the international treaty 
the main one in particular is the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People from the United Nations. As the United States sits at the helm of the Social and Economic Council. For the first time, allegedly in history, the United States President actually sits as the head of that council. Some say he's going to stay in Washington after he leaves the so-called White House. They was talking about this on the news um, last week. Some say he's not going to leave. That some type of disaster may happen or occur in which that the elections get postponed or whatever the case is. We don't know. But I've heard all types of things. So I'll say that he's the last president. Not because it's the end of the world shit, but because um, there's going to have to be another method um, in order to keep this from falling. There's supposed to be a reset in which that's supposed to be going on. All right? Taking it from out of the hands of those who function under the 501c3. This is, you will see many state seals, city arms, et cetera, et cetera, in which that shows us as indigenous, aboriginal. As you see here, he has a little small afro. He don't have that long flowing Indian type of hair, which that some of y'all have been used to seeing because y'all seen some Tonto and shit on Long Ranger. And y'all seen um, these new uh, fangled Indians, as they refer to them. Okay? But as you see here, it was together at one time. The eagles sat at the top, as you see here. And we was also at the helm. This is when the United States Corporation came up under America for protection from the Britons. And this is his this is history. Because who was going to protect them? They was new here. They didn't even know how to grow their crops based on their own information. So we had to teach them how to grow crops, how to survive during the winter times, all this. Here's another picture showing you, as you see here, the so-called Star Spangled Banner with the fringes of gold around it symbolize the military, admirality, that's why it's near the waters. We're right next to it. Symbolize. I'm pretty sure the Moroccan flag was there. But they said, uh, make sure y'all get that out the picture. But luckily, they still left the sister in order to show you that this was you and wish that they had this treaty with. Folly of colonization. Now I hold that the American Negro owes no more to the Negroes in Africa than he owes to the Negroes in America. All right? There are millions of needy people over there, but there are also millions of needy people over here as well. The millions in, in America need intelligent men of their numbers to help them. As much as intelligent men are needed in Africa to help her people, Besides, we have a fight on our hands right here, a fight for the redemption of the whole race. A blow struck successful for the Negro in America is a blow struck for the Negro in Africa. For until the Negro is respected in America, he needs not expect 
consideration elsewhere. Check out what he say now. All this native land talk, however, is nonsense. Talking about Africa, that is. Because he said the native land of the American Negro is where? Is America. The native land of the American Negro is America. The native land of the American Negro is America. Who said this? The brother in the upper right hand corner by the name of Frederick Douglass. Once again, the native land of the American Negro is America. Who else said that? Well, Malcolm X said that we'll call Aborigines. Yeah, you all call we'll call Aborigines. You know, I know some y'all don't like for us to say that you're Aborigines, but you are Aborigine. And this Malcolm said that. And that correlates to the definition of American. For the Aboriginal copper colored natives who resided on this land prior to the invasion of their territory by the Europeans. And because these Europeans are now born here, now call themselves Americans. That's bullshit. But yet at the same time, when you ask them their nationality, oh, I'm German. I'm Irish. I'm French. I'm Dutch. But that means you can't be sovereign here. You can only be title sovereign, and that's only through us, the one who have the superior claim of lien on this land, which is America. Once again, the United States is of America. America is not of the United States. When have you ever seen America of the United States? So who has the superior position? The native land of the American Negro is America. Who else said that? Martin Luther the King. Martin Luther the King said it too. He said, for the last 200 years, we lie, languish in our own land, enslaved. He said that. That we was enslaved in our own land. Who else said that? A man by the name of Carter G. Woodson. Second graduate of Harvard University. Right behind W.E.B. Du Bois. In his book, Miseducation of the Negro, he states specifically that few of us are African because many of us did not even come from Africa. Or he he said a few of us came from Af few of us came from Africa. Why we say this when we thought the consensus at that time was that allegedly we came from Africa by the droves, by the millions, by the thousands. This is what they told us. But he said few of us are Africans because many of us didn't even come from Africa. This is in his book, Miseducation of the Negro. Why would he say that? What would be His reasoning for saying that. Everybody knows we're looking for nationality and haven't claimed one yet. Hell, Dr. John Henry Clark said that. He said, we are a people in search of a nationality. 
And when we obtain a nationality, it must instantaneously link us back to land, culture, and nation. He said, we answer the silly names such as Negro, Black, and Colored. This is what Dr. John Henry Clark said. The first slave owner in America was not only a so-called black man, he went to court and demanded it. In 1654, it was the time for Anthony Johnson to release John Kasser, a black indentured servant, meaning he worked for seven years. And instead, Anthony told Kasser he was extending his time. Kasser left and became employed by the free white man, Robert Parker. Anthony Johnson sued Robert Parker in the Northampton Court in 1654. And in, and in 1655, the court ruled that Anthony Johnson could hold John Kasser indefinitely. The court gave jurisdictional sanction for blacks to own a slave of their own race. Thus, Kasser became the first permanent slave and Johnson the first slave owner. This is allegedly what happened. Now, the first person I heard ever say this shit was my man, True Master, producer and rhymer on the first album of the Wu-Tang Clan. Well, actually on several um, Wu-Tang albums and Wu-Tang affiliate productions. Did beats for many of them. And also Rom too. Right, exactly. You're exactly. Umar Johnson, direct descendant of Frederick Douglass. I actually didn't read Frederick Douglass' words. I actually didn't read it too well. And it's not to bash anyone, this is just to show you that some of us still have more studying to do, that's all. Even those who are here, you know, trying to push for, you know, or have their agenda. I don't have an agenda. I just want niggas free, period. Spiritually and on earth. As above, so below. As within, so without. That's my agenda. Negroes going to do what they're going to do anyway. All I can do is just give the information and you do what you can with it. Period. That's as simple as it is. All right, so. You can't push for Africa when the man that you state is your great-great-grandfather stated specifically that we need to be pushing for our treatment and fairness and rights and justice here as America is the land of the so-called African Negro. And like you said, not to say that African Negroes don't have problems, they do. But once we strike a blow here, Shit, we struck a damn blow for the whole damn world. The whole Negro world. Okay? So nationality is the key. My nationality is being substituted for political slave brand. Okay? Negro, black, and colored. Nationalized more. Negro, black, and colored. Denationalized more. Dutch slave master, you are now my chattel property. You're now my chattel property. Well, I mean, that's, that's somewhat what happened. Because they want to say about Anthony Johnson being the first slave owner. Well, Anthony Johnson didn't have to damn, this is the same shit I'm going to have to tell y'all 
um you know just just like uh my man you know in um what's the name of that movie <laughs> Um, Miss Hawkins, we don't have any planes, Miss Hawkins. We don't have any boats, Miss Hawkins. That's Wesley Snipes. I, and he was talking um, in the movie uh, that blew him up. Y'all might remember that movie. But he was basically saying... We don't have any boats. We don't have any planes. We didn't have any, um, you know, way of bringing the drugs in. Well, same thing. Neil Brown. Yeah, Neil Brown. That's it. So we, it's the same thing. We, we, I, didn't, I didn't read in any of that information about Anthony Johnson that he had a boat. Or that he had, you know, ships or, you know, or... Or, or, or you know, or some type of, you know, transportation. So he didn't go. Obviously, he might have went to the auction and, and got the nigga, but he didn't go to um, the West Indies or Caribbean. He didn't go to South America, Central America, or to the Pacific Islands. He didn't, he didn't do all of that. Okay, and this was 15, um, 1654. And they want to say that that's when, um, so, but you know that we heard that it was 20 Negroes who was there in 1619. That's 40 years, nearly 40 years before that incident. And what's the Supreme Court? And see, this is what we have to ask the question. Is this fictitious? Because what's the Supreme Court even established in 1654? Look that shit up. Because they didn't form until 1776. Under a declaration of a declaration which became later the Declaration of Independence. That was more than a hundred and twenty years later. So there's some things in which that you have to question. I'll put that in there so that we can continue doing our research. Because there's nothing worse than a slave with an ego. And many of our people who are slaves have some big-ass egos. But a person who is wholly subject to the will of another, one who has no freedom of action, or who's person and services are wholly under the control of another, one who is under the power of a master and who belongs to him. So the master may sell, dispose of his person, of his industry, and of his labor without him being able to do anything, have anything, or acquire anything, but what must belong to his master. Damn. That's a slave. All these brothers getting shot down and nothing is happening to the police officers you're not going to jail what is that to us it, well it says it right here you may dispose of his person because Without being able to have to what to do anything, have anything, or acquire anything, but what must belongs to his master? What are they telling us that they still are? 
And as long as we want the Negro, Black, and Colored, those fictitious artificial labels, well, we are the slaves. Okay? So, look here, chattel. An article of personal property, any species of property, not amounting to a freehold or fee in land. Fee in land. The term chattel is more comprehensive than goods, as it includes animated as well as inanimated property. Blackstone Dictionary 4, Blackstone Dictionary 1st for slave and chattel. So we know that slaves are chattel property. That's what we just seen when you um, um, over the head of the of the Dutch master saying that um, you are now my chattel property, and that's us back then. Nationality is the key, dude. Nationality is the key. That's us screaming. But many think nationality is the key, and the only thing they have to do is just verbalize it. I have many more who say they don't need paperwork. All they have to do is just say it in a court of law. Oh, for real? Try that shit in one of their kangaroo courts and see that you will have a psychological test evaluation done. You need a paper trail in their courtroom. Try that shit in Ohio. Try that shit in Virginia and see what happens. Verbal communication, huh? Without the paperwork to back it up. Interesting. Interesting concept. It doesn't work. At least not in those states. And you might can get away with it here in North Carolina because we paved the way. But we done sued officers. We done had um, members to place liens on um, DAs and judges and officers and so forth and so on. We done um, closed their credit accounts. They couldn't do anything with their credit, you know. So all types of things. Now we we done done it over the last fifteen years. So they either afraid of us or either they just be like, um, you're going to let them go. Sheriff Department told uh, one of the sisters um, who um, used to come to our classes. She was from the Sheriff Department in Durham. And she said that her command, her watch commander told them that um, if they see moors, leave them alone. They, they don't care if a damn hand is hanging out the damn back of the trunk. Leave them alone. Now, of course, that's kind of, you know, that's, the, that's to the extreme, but basically what he was saying is that leave them alone. You know, if you don't want um, your property uh, messed with, Possibly your bond, your insurance bond, um, coverage removed. Hence, with your bond um, insurance cover removed, removed means that you lose your job. Like we got about 50 police officers um, quit and fired in Raleigh, North Carolina. After we start putting in these lawsuits, so this is real, but you have to be in your proper persona to choice, not pro se, and not Negro, Black, and colored status. And if they have chattel paper, which is your birth certificate, i.e., everything else that you have. Read, read the chapter paper. It says, means a record or records that evidence both a monetary obligation, which that's what the bond is. Birth certificate is a monetary obligation. It's a 
warehouse receipt. It is also a bond. It is also a security interest in Pacific Goods. And you're the goods, remember? Chattel, more comprehensive one than goods, as it includes animated as well as inanimated property or objects. Record that evidence a right to payment arising from out of the use of a credit or charge card or information containing on or for use with the card. But the whole thing, that's why they also call it a debit card. You take the word, you take the letter I from out of debit and you have the word debt. D-E-B-I-T, D-E-B-T. Debt. So chattel paper correlates to all of this particular information here. So they got chattel papers on you and you're not supposed to put in any documentation affidavits to state otherwise, to state your position, really? Well, this is how the Jews see you as they are the bankers. In particular, the Rothschilds, which is worth $600 trillion and more, as I'm sure Rothschild had that just in his basement alone in the 1800s. Okay? They were the financiers for the Vatican. They were the bankers for the Vatican, the financiers for the Vatican. The Rothschilds said, well, we need a family to run things in the West as we handle things in the East. Well, guess who they chose? The Rothschilds. John D. Rockefeller, who has over 209 trusts. The Rockefeller has over 209 trusts. And they're worth trillions of dollars. Or they just say multi billionaires. And they only mention David Rockefeller. There's plenty of Rockefellers. But anyway, these so-called Jews, and I say so-called because they're Jewish, which is not real Jews. As you know, reading Revelation, second chapter, ninth verse, Third chapter 9 verse of Revelation. There are some that say they are Jews but are not, but really the synagogue of Satan. But since the Jews use the Bible, then we can use the Bible in that sense too. But right here, going. Gohim. Often disparaging a non Jewish person, Gentile, also Goy. Western. See Goyim? Gentile. Goyim. A foreign nation. Hence, a Gentile. Well, guess what? Moors are in a foreign nation. Moors come from the word Moab. And Moab was part of the Israelites or Hebrews. Hence, not a foreign nation, but a real Jew, hence a Gentile, also a troop of animals, or a flight of locusts. That's if we're going to use the Bible, that is. But anyway, since they're using it, you can, you know, use it too. Gentiles, heathens, nations, people, the new strong um, exhaustive, exhaustive concordance of the Bible, 1995. Literally, Gohi means nation. It is also Jewish slang for cattle or animals. For a Jewish thinking, there is only two nations in the world, the Jewish nation and the Gentile. And the word Gentile simply means 
genitals. You think with your genitals. Instead of your big head, you think with your little head. And your little head done got you in trouble. It done made you a slave to materialism. So anyone comes along and drops some crumbs on you, you grab them for that shit. This is what they're saying. See, Gentile, goods. They always relate Gentiles to goods. Listen to um, Rabbi Finkelstein on YouTube. And he's talking about how the Jews kidnap nearly 300,000 children a year and suck the blood out of them and put it in their leaven bread. And then take the meat or the bodies and make it and process it to meat for McDonald's and different other um, restaurants. The Jews got busted recently for a black market organ um, um, on the black market on organs. New York to Chicago, Detroit, so forth and so on. Monster, a human being by birth, but in some parts resembling a lower animal. Well, what some parts is that? Well, we know animals like their sex. They got the rabbits. They get it on real quick. Dogs. So they talk about the sexual nature of the person. So you're a human being by birth, which is what? The original in which that we just read. Natural birth. An American. Whether born in North, Central, the adjoining islands of South America. But in some parts resembling a lower animal, a corporation, a corpse. A monster has no inheritable blood and cannot be heirs to any land. Well, that's the reason why they turned you into a corporation, i.e., straw man, i.e., Strongest homo, i.e., chattel, i.e., going, i.e., monster. Because none of them can be heirs to any land. Hence the reason why they have to keep calling you Negro, Black, and Color, African American, etc., etc., keep changing their names to labels in which that does not denote to land. Connection. Valentine Lord 1930. A prestigious birth, a human birth or offspring not having the shape of mankind, which cannot be heir to any land, albeit before in marriage. Valentine first on um, Black Slow Dictionary 1. No, under human being, Valentine state only see monster, neither of the Major, above major law dictionary, define human being only monster. They don't define human being because then they won't be included because they're mankind. A kind of man, not quite human. So this is why they have to make a distinction between natural person and artificial person. You know the name in all caps is what they use. That's the legal fiction. The fictitious name, artificial, artificial person, the Edom Sanan, the informer. Edom Sanan means sounding the same or like having the same sound. So Jesse Jackson, name it up in low case, still sound like Jesse Jackson, name it all caps. The name applied 
the, um, a term applies to names which are substantially the same, though slightly varying in spelling, as Lawrence or Lawrence and the like. Your straw man trade name in all caps found is acting like your true name. Initial letters only capitalized when spoken. When written, however, the two names represent two entirely different entities, one in the legal construct and the name of the artificial person under whose trade name can conduct business. The other is your true name and reference and identifies you and expresses your standing as a sovereign. Both names constitute property, however, and may be copyrighted under the law. So what the Moors do it says in order to even not even have that discussion, I might have been Jesse Jackson. I'm no longer that. I'm Mustafa El Bay. Change name altogether, and that way you create a total separation from that entity in which that they have in all caps, in which that they have on the stock market. Negro. The word Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race, and does not commonly include a mulatto. Felix versus State 18, Alabama 720. But the laws of the different states are not uniform in this respect. Some includes in the description Negro as one who has one eighth or more African blood. Term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is Negro. Negro. Right versus Galoon. 139 Mississippi, 760. The word Negro is derived from the Latin word Niger, meaning black. Niger, a Latin word, was formerly used by the Moors, the old Romans, to designate any black inferior object, etc., a plant, a marsh, flat, moist, ground, bog, or animal. Mica, the uh, Mesorite a prophet of the Moors, prophesied in the days of Hadakai, king of Judah, and spoke to all the people of Judah, the Moors, saying, Thus readeth the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be plunged, um, plowed like a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, a forest. Well, black person. Black person, according to the Constitution and law, must be taken in its generic sense as contradiction from white. Right versus Galoon, once again, 139 Mississippi. Now, we just seen Negro defined in Black Law Dictionary, and now we see Black person defined in Black Law Dictionary. Right? It says Black person is a generic term, in its generic sense. Negro, Black, and more. The evolution of these terms as applied to Native Americans and others. Different tendencies to use of Negro and Black. In 1854, the California State Supreme Court sought to bar all nine Caucasians from equal civilization, citizenship, excuse me, and civil rights. The court states the word Black may include all Negroes, but the term Negro does not include all Black persons. We are at the opinion that the word White, Negro, Mulatto, and Black people, a person, whatever they occur in our Constitution may be taken in its generic sense, because none of these words are in the Constitution. Thus, the word black person in the 14th section um, may take as contradiction from white and necessarily include all races other than the Caucasian. All right? It says includes all other races other than the Caucasian. A convolute, convolute, as the quote may be, it expresses a strong tendency in the history of the United States, a tendency to identify two broad classes of people, white and non-white citizens and non-citizens, or semi-citizens. That's what we are right now. We're semi-citizens. The word block, pale, blocking, Blacking, to become pale, to turn white, to become black, to be blackened, black ink, blink, pale, bleak, bleaker, 
to bleach, also to lighten, um, bleak, pale, bleaking, to bleach, blotch, pale, bleak, blatching, bleach, black, black, pale, it remarkably the black, bleak, and bleach are radically one word. The primary sense seemed to be pale. <laughs> this is from the etymology dictionary. So black means pale. If you are pale, by definitely mean dimmed of light. If you are dim of light, meaning that you have little light, you know, uh, you don't have much light, and you are dim of light. I mean, hell, even Christians we got that shit right. Just look like the mind. I'm gonna let it shine. Right here, look at black man, a Negro. In all caps is what the devil. What? Damn, let's let's go back again. Black man, a Negro, in caps, the devil. Mm. Look at black man now. This is a noun, y'all. This black man, who's a noun, he's a what? A funeral director. <laughs> a funeral director? Well, I mean, shit, that is where the name is all caps is located at. Is that, is, is that the tombstone um, um, at the bedroom yard that the funeral director, you know, like to take niggas to? <laughs> well, look at vanilla natural form. It's real dark. And but this is chocolate in its natural form. It's white. What's going on? But we think vanilla is white. You think chocolate is dark, but not in the natural form. So see, there's been a whole switcheroo that's been done on it. Somebody didn't pay attention to school. What is a noun? A noun is a person, place, or thing. What is an adjective? An adjective describes a noun, and it is not, but it is not the noun. It is not the noun. It is not the noun. The word black is an adjective, and it is not a noun. If you're black. You are not a noun. You are an adjective. An adjective is not a person, place, or thing. Which means you aren't even three-fifths of a man or person or, as Malcolm said, you are subhuman, a monster. That's what Malcolm said. Malcolm, in, his, in one of his famous speeches, he, he said that. Okay? He said that we... We're dealing with having no nationality, but being classified as three fifth person by the Constitution, Article One, Section Two. In which that's supposed to have been superseded by the Fourteenth Amendment. In which that allegedly made us citizens, but it just simply made us semi citizens. I Means someone who has the ability in order to be granted privileges. That's what a registered voter is, someone who has a privilege. A person who has a driver's license is a privilege. Someone who has a marriage certificate is a privilege. Someone who has a fish license is a privilege. These are privileges. These are not by nature. These do not come from God. It's not natural. So there's no such thing as white or black people. Even the black store dictionary show you that there's white um, person and there's free white person in the same dictionary, especially if you get the fourth edition. Free white person denotes someone who through the national through the um, naturalization act, which you don't have to get naturalized because you're already natural. You're a natural being or a natural person already. Which, by the Black Star Dictionary 7th edition, natural person, first word in this de um, definition is indigenous. 
first word is indigenous. It is a legal status. Free white person is a legal status, not a complexion. There was recently a um a few actually a few years ago now, an Egyptian who came over and he was gonna be classified as white. Understand that these Africans that are coming over here, um, Arabs, Hispanics that are coming over here, they're being classified as white. In which that makes up the two hundred and seventy million people. Because there's not that many Europeans actually. They add in and all these people who has been classified or has the status as free white person through the Nationalization Act. Color. Uh, Dr. Lee? Yes. Yes. Um, oh, I have a question in regards to um, the SF-181 form, yes. since you're yes. speaking of the white and the black status. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Do you, I, I would like to hear your thoughts about it. Like, do you feel that it's beneficial in any regard for us to fill out that form? Just to um, correct. Well, some people, some people, people like, like it goes through the, um, IRS, well, not the IRS slash really goes through first the Social Security Department or the Social Security Administration. They use the um, 181 form in order to mostly mark white and Native American. You know, um, I have a problem with the white. If you're utilizing white and you have not been naturalized, because we, as being indigenous people, have not been naturalized through their process of naturalization. We're not immigrants. We are indigenous. So our process will have to be different. We wouldn't be called necessarily white, even though we can see by the definition that everybody in that definition is mixed. So it's not talking about, obviously, um, someone's status. I mean, someone's complexion. It's talking about someone's status. So um, I see many who have filled it out and they mark white and they mark Native American. I don't see a problem with it per se, but I think that that has to be discussed because also in the same Black Store Dictionary, I see the word white person. And who say that they can't, um, you know, say which one is which at any convenient time? I believe that's the reason why they put it like that is so that they can utilize their laws in order to switch it out at will. Because um, free white person says does not include Caucasian. Well, guess what? You go to white person, guess what it says? It says does include Caucasian. You know, so that's the trick of the term white in that regard. I wouldn't utilize it. If it's going to be, if you want to use something, use Native American. You know, we have a better term, you know, such as indigenous or aboriginal. Native American probably would be the closest, um, I can say, you would probably get to as far as filling out the um, 181 form. Did I um, answer your question, Reese? Yes, I was I was responding in the chat because I didn't want the echo to interfere, but yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. All right, so you see the word color in appearance, semblance, a sacrum, a distinguished from that which appears to be real or which is real. So color distinguishes from that which is real or appears to be real, a prima facie or apparent right. Um, high is a deceptive appearance, a plausible assume, assume concealing a lack, in, a lack of reality, a disguise, 
pretext. This is all the deficits of the word color. This is railroad company versus all free, etc., etc. Now you come down the last paragraph. It says the word also means the dark color shown in the presence of Negro blood. It is equivalent to the African descent or African. Johnson versus Board of Education. Well, that's interesting. So we go further on. We get the word color. You know, National Association Advancement of Colored People. By common usage in America, this term in such phrases as color persons, the color race, the color men, and the like, is used to designate Negroes and the person of African race. Inclu African race includes persons of mixed blood descent from Negro ancestry. Collins versus Oklahoma State Hospital. But where a state constitution provides for separate schools for whites and colored races, the term white race, which held to be limited to the Caucasian race, see, there it is. And the term colored race to embrace all other races. Rice versus gun loan, 139 Mississippi. So that's the problem I've had with utilizing the word white, because even in the dictionary, this one here states that it's limited to, you're going to use it as race, because that's what they can say that is race. It states on the form. Uh, what race are you? And it says black or African American, white, Native American, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They can say, well, this particular definition talking about race, which is the Caucasian race, is limited to the Caucasian race. So the question we would have had to ask the person is, well, would you? Um, do you come from the Caucasian mountains? If you don't come from the Caucasus Mountains and don't have ancestry from the Caucasus Mountains, then you should not use the word white. Now, if they have free white person, or if you mark out white or put free and then person be um, free before it and person behind it, then that's a different story. But even then, that's under the Naturalization Act. It was of 1890 or something like that. But that's under the um, Naturalization Act. That's not under, you know, your indigenous Aboriginal natural self. Because you're already natural if you state that you're indigenous. Remember, the first definition in natural, excuse me, um, um, is, is indigenous. Look up the Black Law Dictionary 7th edition and you see natural, the first word in this definition is indigenous. And I'll get to what indigenous means in a second. But here, it also has been held that there is no legal, technical significance to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. Pasca versus Dallas. Now, that's deep. Um, um, 31 Texas, 74. And that's deep because I've done seen national, the uh, NAACP, National Association of Advancement of Colored People, go in court on behalf of people. Like they got some authority when the definition right here says there's no legal technic um, technical signification to the phrase. But here they are to talk about colored people. Negro. The only people who has no knowledge of his or her true heritage. Black is not a country or nationality. It is a color, a.k.a. A crayon. It is your nationality. What is your nationality? That's the question we have to ask. Negro, black, colored, African American? Well, focus on the ongoing identity crisis of the American Negro. Look at the words here. 1600, he was called savages. 1700, he was called natives. Huh? The Negro, the American Negro was called natives? Now, that's D. 1800, niggers. 1900, darkies. 1910, pickaninnies. 1920s, coons. 1930s, spooks. 1940, boy. 1950, colored. 1960, negroes. 1970, black um, brothers. 1970, blacks. 1990, African Americans. 2000, moors. That's the question mark. Going to be moors? 
okay? And then 1920, Kuhn caused the word Wichita means raccoon. And then what they did was just a washo means a raccoon. And what they did just took the raw off and just left the word coons. All right? That, that is the historical part where they got that 1920 term coon from, from raccoon. Right, through the years, the black race has been known by many names. In the 1990s, they seized the opportunity to be officially recognized in an undeniable, honest way with the collective title of African American. Perhaps if this trend continues, we may soon look forward to addressing this race with an even more appropriate group term or title. Excuse me. Liver lips, no working, crack sucking, you know, welfare, cheating. Chicken frying, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Fourteen ninety-two Indians, eighteen thirty-two Negroes, eighteen sixty-five Black, nineteen nineteen hundred Negro, nineteen fifty Colored, nineteen seventy African Amer Afro American, nineteen eighty Black, nineteen eighty-eight African American. Reclassification: a legal move serving two agendas. By changing the identity of the original people to legal fictions on paper, they no longer exist as a people. You see that? But once again, Negroes, there's some Negroes in this Moorish movement, which I think are agents, as they keep saying that you don't need no paperwork. But damn, it says right here, the original people to legal fiction on paper. They no longer exist as a people. So if they are... Legal fictions on paper, they no longer exist. If there are no people attached to the land, it's considered abandoned. Da da. The reason why they call you African American, the reason why they call you Negro, colored, black, because these names allude to no land tie. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Abandoned land can be utilized and controlled freely by the person. Who found it? The main reason the original inhabitants were miseducated with the help of religion, the media, legal, and um, um, education system is to keep the land in a state of abandonment. America is the land of opportunities for everyone but the true inheritors as long as they continue wearing the legal fictions given to them by their co um, converting their heritage, by those converting their heritage. Now, we're the only people that don't change our name. You know, as you see there, dozens and dozens of times. We know even from the 1900s, we was called Negroes. 1930, we became colored. 1960, we became black. 1990, we became African American. The name has kept being changed. Negro, black, colored, African American, more. There you go. Negro, the word Negro means a black man, one descended from African race, and does commonly include a mulatto. Felix versus State, 18, Alabama, 720. But the term Negro necessarily a person of color, but not every person of color is a Negro. Black person, according to constitutional law, must be taken in its generic sense. It's a generic term. Color, by common usage in America, this term is such phrases, color person, colored man, color racist, etc. And the likes is used to designate Negroes or persons for the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descendancy from Negro ancestry. But is a term in which that there is no legal technical significance to the phrase. More, and also of the Isles of Man, who summons the courts for the several shreddings, but also is similar to the English bailiff of 100. So one more is equal to 100 bailiffs in England. But even further, it says land ties. Well, according to Blackstone Dictionary, fourth edition, deluxe edition, Land, in the most general sense, comprehends any ground, so you are, earth whatsoever, a field, or meadows, pasture, woods, moors. The word for moors is embedded inside the definition of land. This is what Dr. John Henry Clark was talking about. You can't get more instantaneous than this. We're in search of a nationality 
And a nationality must instantaneously attach you to land, culture, and history. To land, instantaneously. So here the word more is embedded inside the definition of land. How can you can't get more instantaneous than that? Waters, marshes, furs, on first and heaps. Land is the foundation of nationality. And the name more symbolizes the birthright tie or heritage. In the international law, Negroes, black and colored in the said United States of America are listed as stateless, i.e. landless. And I just gave you the reason why they listed as such. We being Moors are in fact partial to the land or parcel. It is our ancestral estate by lineal um, descent, by heritage, just as we are parcel by nature. Nature, law, and divine law. Parcel, a part or portion of land, a part of an estate. But it's no coincidence that in the Bible it tells you that Adam came from the ground, which is the land. You have to be the color of the ground. Hence, i.e. the land. We being more than in fact partial to the American National Constitution and law of the land. It was established at our authority for the purpose of bringing peace, law, and order to the land for everybody. The unshakable divine or ancient divine principles of government are imbued in it. And it's the longest standing constitution on the planet Earth um, present today. And is why Prophet Nobu Ali said to answer up and enforce the American national constitution for nationals. Mm. The principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice are embedded at its foundation and in its preamble. And are the principles for all nations on the Earth. Put yourself in a solid rock. Um, um, a foundation by study. All right, read chapter 46 and message to the black man for the gift of understanding. Study for yourself to show yourself approval so that you may know because man does not know by being told or by being told. Teach them to be partial and they become a portion of the more. Teach them to be parcel and they become the more. As you just seen, land is tied to nationality. You being a more. Original Amendment number nine of the United States Constitution. The Congressional um, Globe, the official proceedings of Congress, published by John C. Reeves, Washington, D.C., United States Republic, 38th um, Congress, first session, September 9th, 1864. It says here, the traffic in um, state on um, slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited of pains of death and the fortitude of all rights and property of persons engaging therein. And the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. So you cannot be a citizen of the private, non-profit religious corporation registered in Delaware because you are a national, an American national. In fact, a non citizen U.S. national. But if you don't declare your nationality, you remain in chattel property status. Sovereign free Moors, law case 1789-1790. This legal case involved Moors who was being falsely and for, uh, forcibly held in the Negro status and were sold as slaves by way of the usual birth. Still in names, branding tactics, to satisfy colonialized Europeans. The Moors um, petitioned the House of Representatives and the plea, the legal case, legal status and case and argument before the House of Representatives. They were successful in their confirmation of declaring their true nationality. The following is a brief about the I'm sorry, free Moors legal status case. The journals of the House of Representatives, United States of America, Republic of America, and published in South Carolina Department of of um, archives and history, 1789 through 1790. Geographical location, the land territory known as North, uh, South Carolina, North America. Um, pre practitioners, the um, ex slaves, Francis, Daniel, Hammond, and Samuel. He was um, 
the names of those who are super forth that bill or as we would say um, that act but here we have resolution 75 1933 um, legislative journal of the House of Representatives page 5759 um, Come down, it says, the society has done much to bring about thorough absorption by these people of their principles, which are necessary to make them good American citizens. These Moorish Americans have such been, um, has been missed use of the titles and names and connections that were so familiar at home and which are used in accordance with the doctrine of the religious faith to which they are adhering, therefore be it. Resolved that this house commended the Morris American Society of Philadelphia for the effective and um, efficient service it is rendering the nation is being uh, bringing about a speedy and thorough Americanization of these former Moors and theirs is in accordance with the fullness right of religious independence guaranteed every citizen who recognize also the rights of these people to be used to name NX, L, or Ali, or Bay, or any other prefix or suffix to which they have heretofore been accustomed to, or which they may hereafter acquire the use of. All right, and that's important because this puts us back as being a natural person as opposed to these particular terms here individual United States government employee that's what an individual is an individual is a corporate public persona existing only in the public sphere having been created by law laws of man that is individual equals destroy man and of the law is no excuse so see employee employer um, organize, um, organizer person public law matter of fact the definition of employer is that of a master. The definition of employee is that of a slave. Or the future person, an entity such as a corporation created by law and given certain legal rights and duties of a human being. A being, whether real or imaginary, once again, whether real, um, um, real or imaginary, for the purpose of legal reasoning for treating a more or less as a human being with terms fictitious person, juristic person, legal person, black store exchange have additions. Right. So civil is more too, simply dead, dead in the view of the law, the condition of one who has lost his civil rights and capacity and is accounted dead in law. Rizza versus Rizza. Razor versus Razor, 173, um, South Carolina. So right here, person, in the general usage, a human being, i.e. natural person, though by statute, the term may include legal or labor organizations, partnerships, associations, Corporations, legal representatives, trustees, trustees, and bankruptcy or receiver. C. E. G. National Labor Relations Act, Section 2, Area 1, 20, Title 29, United States Code, Section 152, Uniform Partnership Act, Section 2. The person is similar to a company or corporation in that it exists as a construct of the imagination. It has no real body. No soul to save, but for legal purposes, carries similar rights and attributes of that of a human man or woman. And as much a government is artificial person, an abstraction, and a creature of the mind only, a government can interfere only with other artificial persons. You see that? The imagination having neither artificiality. Actuality nor substance is foreclosed for creating or obtaining parity with the tangible. The legal manifestation of this is that no government, as well as any law agency, aspect, court, 
etc., can concern itself with anything other than the corporation or the future person and contract between them. This is Penhow versus Dow administrators. All right. Title three, United States Code fifty four. All right. So they can only mess with a corporation. This is why you have to come back in control of your corporation and become the president or CEO of your corporation. Because your corporation, as it states here, is a slave. Person, persona, equals mass. The state as a corporate abstraction cannot create real person, but can create the mass they wear and tax, regulation, and control that creation, mass person. Men and women operate in, under common law. The person is ruled by statute codes and regulations due to contract he has made. Your person is the name on your birth certificate, drops, license, social security number, your utility bills, etc. It is also named in all caps. These are contracts you have made with the government. They can only interfere with the legal persona. All right, here we go, employer. One who employs the services of another, one whose employee works and who has paid their wages and salary, the relation of the employee, um, Andrew versus White, Eagle, um, Oil and Refining Company. It says master is a synonymous term. Master is a synonymous term. So if employer is master, then what is employee? I just I just leave that there for a minute. All right, citizen, person who by either birth or naturalization is a member of a political community, owing allegiance to the community and being entitled to enjoy all its civil rights and protection, a member of the civil state, entitled to all its privileges. So, to be a citizen, you have privileges. Federal citizen, a citizen of the United States. As a born citizen, a person born within the jurisdiction of a national government. Well, if this government was was the juror and not de facto, then natural born citizen could be something in which that we could be. Naturalized citizen, a foreign person who obtains citizenship by law. This is everybody who comes here. Immigrants. They're naturalized citizens. This goes for the term free white person, as is under the Naturalization Act. National, the highest ranking citizen that are the natural, aboriginal, and indigenous inhabitants of the land. Is this you? Then you can declare your nationality. Naturalized citizen. They are the ones who come here and become citizens through naturalized process, not to be confused with natural, uh, excuse me, be confused with natural uh, nationalization. Subjects. They, this is where corporations, United States of America, United States, which is Union States, State of, etc., rest and corporate, corporate people rest there as well, Negroes, Colors, and Blacks. Aliens, these are the foreigners who remain as foreigners while residing here. Integration itself indicates that wanting to live and be loved and lay around with people who destroyed us and enslaved us and given us the greatest pains in the world is mentally unhealthy. In other words, that unhealth of the black community serves as the health and the wealth of the white community, just as the sickness of drug addicts. <coughs> Helps the health and the wealth of the pusher. This is Dr. Amos Wilson, a right, psychologist. A psychiatrist, excuse me. All right. So I'm going to stop here and we're going to pick it back up um, next class. Are there any questions concerning anything that we've gone over so far? All right, if not, then.
and we're going to say good night to everyone. And we're going to come back the next class. I'm sorry, that's early. Um, my question is, can we ever be classified as citizens? Only, only under American national. And so far, they don't they have don't that classification on the document. So that's something in which that we will have to work towards is getting them to put um, indigenous or aboriginal or um, something in which that more or something in which that classifies us as American national as compared to on what they have now. Now on the U.S. passport, they do have non-citizen U.S. national. And that is what we have been telling people to circle on the passport. Okay. We wish it was something in which that was already done, being that, you know, the Moore Science Temple been here, you know, 100 years, you know, over 100 years, you know, you would think, you know, that it would have been done by now, but it hasn't. Still hasn't. We're still not full citizens. And they know it. We called down to the um, passport place back in 2008. 2007 going into 2008, and my wife said, um, asked the lady on the other end, um, ma'am, you know we're not, you know, ma'am, you know we're not U.S. citizens. She said, yes, I know, but you need this passport, don't you? What that mean? Means that the passport is a privilege in which that you need in order to get in and out. Yes, we know your legal status. But you're not U.S. citizens. So in order to become U.S. citizens, um, we have to declare nationality, number one, so that we can be outside that field and then be able to um, state, even through their forms, that we are um, U.S., um, that we are non-U.S. citizens, um, non-U.S. Um, um, citizens, nationals, which is American national or some uh, some way be able to do some um, do so you know so we have to start working on that and getting them to um, to do that we need to start writing um, Mrs. Leach or Lynch um, who is um, right now the highest attorney in the land you know and see if we can get some things done and some other things that we can do. But that definitely is one of them. Okay. Indeed, I agree. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Okay. Does someone else have a question before we go? Right, if not, we're gonna say peace to everyone. Good night. Um, and we'll see everybody here um Thursday. Peace. <laughs>